Okay, I can't lie, this is a very selfish experiment. I currently game the Stealth 2 HD. I use that term lightly. I do swap out for the TaylorMade Mini Burner driver quite regularly, but the new QI 10 Max does interest me and it did perform incredibly well out on the course for a few rounds. So I wanna take a closer look at the numbers, but we have to start here and find out why the 10K MOI is such a huge leap for TaylorMade. You can clearly see they peaked at 8,500 MOI and that is where my current driver sits as it being the most forgiving driver in TaylorMade history until now so is this one giant step for mankind does 10k really matter is it simply a new buzzword to get fixated on within the world of driver technology does it represent true forgiveness for woeful swings and for me at least is it any better than the stealth 2 hd all will be revealed in today's video so the three factors for me to consider ball speed launch and spin but finally and maybe the most importantly one element we're going to attempt to measure today to decide if moi is real so how did they achieve 10k and what's so different about this new driver well, first of all, the rear weight was 30 grams in the Stealth and it's 32 gram in the QI10 Max. And the heel weight has had a big move and there is also a significant shift in the amount of carbon in the Crown, 97% in the QI10 Max and 79% in the Stealth 2. They've also removed a considerable amount of titanium from the Stealth body and replaced it with carbon, all to save and redistribute weight. The shape is then very different and different for a reason. It is eight millimeters longer, which means the 32 gram weight can be moved even further back than the position that it was in the Stealth 2. Okay, so that's first ball of the morning. 149 smash factor, which is the key bit. Uh, in terms of efficiency, 93 club head speed, 12 launch, 22 peak height, 2.6 spin, 221 carry. It's a real good first number. I feel like that's the kind of swing I would hit off the first, or I'd hope I'd hit off the first tee at St Andrews or any golf course for that matter. It's the one that, like I said, 93. I was topping out yesterday at around 97. So we're way down on full club head speed yet. But I like to see what a club does in and around an area where I feel comfortable. Again, what's interesting, really good straight ball flight. It's probably very similar. It felt very similar anyway. I feel like I'm finally in the middle of the club face. So what we got, 226 carry, um, slightly higher launch. I'll carry on it in numbers with this. That's exactly where I'd expect this to be. And the key factor for me is that smash factor. The other important bit right now, we've got two balls down the middle of a fairly big fairway, don't get me wrong. So I'm gonna carry on hitting this and then we'll switch this shaft into the older club, the HD, and just see what kind of difference it makes. Interesting bit there for me, three from three, almost identical in where they finished up on the fairway and not too dissimilar in every parameter. That's what I'm looking for, is consistency of performance. That's what seems to be good about this year's drivers. Again, not gonna to be too dissimilar. They're on top of one another. Well, it one more to give us a round number of uh, that, well, that five. And uh, I don't really need to hit any more. The only thing I'd like to do is be able to come back to this when I'm warmed up a little and maybe see what we can get out of it distance wise. It's probably worth mentioning at this point as I switch into the uh, exactly the same head nine degrees. Um, I have the shaft that I use is a good inch and a quarter realistically shorter than uh, your regular driver shaft. So this is a 44 and a half inch shaft. I switched into this over maybe almost two years ago with the original lineup of Stealth, just for control and trying to find the center of the club face. The reason I'm pointing that out for anybody who's looking to do any sort of comparisons relative to other reviews that I've done, we've got to bear that in mind because the likelihood is I'm not really going to get club head speed up to 97 mile an hour with this shorter shaft. Hopefully we can get up to sort of 95, 95 and a bit maybe, but it's a big consideration because obviously, you know, club head speed is then going to be relative to ball speed. So important fact. I mean, it's interesting for me looking down, I did like the little red accent that they added in Stealth 2 and probably, you know, 
I prefer this at address, I've got to say, but then the whole red versus blue thing is an issue for me, full stop, so yeah. I should order one of the bespoke ones that you can get in the red in the uh, QI-10. It looks superb. Well, that's, you know, again, straight out of the blocks, very, very similar to the line. In fact, I've got three balls that, I'm looking down to the right-hand side, three balls that are almost on top of one another where they finished on this big fairway. Um, and yeah, again, efficiency-wise, 148, 1.48, that is. Uh, 1.8 spin, low, 2.21 carry, launching 15.4 and a very straight ball flight. Yeah. Again, just a little bit of movement from right to left. Not as central as those first two, but what you'll see is the graphic that I'm looking at down the right-hand side is we've got a lot of balls that are in identical position. That 222 carry distance is something that we've been seeing, that sort of low to mid 220 carry with a spin in around 2,000 revs. You know, I mean, it's, uh, we've picked up the club head speed a little bit and we're still remaining at a 1.49 smash factor, which is incredibly efficient. One final experiment, so I'm just going to switch up to a full length Tensai Blue 65 stiff, which is again uh, a shaft that is often fitted for me. I'm going to try that in both heads and just see if we can creep up that club head speed just a little bit so we've got a comparison versus other drives that I've tested in that uh, distance stakes at least. Today's video is sponsored by our friends at Hot Golf, the online golf retailer for all major brands. And if you want new golf gear, then please support us by supporting them. Okay, so this video and the last few have been all about sort of analyzing data, whacking a lot of balls, and just seeing if we can differentiate between these new and older clubs. Now, don't forget this HD was eight and a half thousand in this uh, MOI stake. So, you know, it's, it's, it's up there. How much does that leap really mean to that 10K model? That's what I was trying to establish today. And when it started off at the kind of 93 mile an hour club head speed, I'm going to say performance was very, very similar indeed. I never spotted any real obvious um, issues. The one thing I would say that with the HD, I had the odd ball that would pop up to three and a half thousand revs on the spin and just float a little, which can be dangerous, but it was an odd ball. There was more consistency of the max in terms of maintaining that spin number. And if anything, the odd ball with the max fell kind of quite low for me as well. So there was variables in both. The one thing, just going back to the address position, until I filmed them both afterwards, I could have never told you that that eight millimeters, which doesn't seem a great deal, but at address, it is hugely different when they're side by side. But I've got to say, when I switched in and out the two, I never really noticed just how big the Max product was. Although I will go back to my initial comment where I do like the little red accent that was on the HD model uh, and probably prefer it uh, from the address position. Back to performance. 
I then switched things up, we changed shaft, we went to the full length shaft, that tensile blue. Once again, similarities, but the gap started to widen slightly and we were starting to see a slightly better performance or a slightly more consistent performance coming out of that Max product. And this is where it got interesting for me because the final piece of the jigsaw that I alluded to in the um, introduction to this video was we were gonna look at a piece of um, Trackman data that might give us more clues as to what is going on in the forgiveness stakes. Um, and impact location is something we've looked at in the past and we've dabbled at. Essentially, it's where you're hitting the ball within the club face and just how consistent performance becomes when off-centre strikes occur. And that was really interesting and only at the very end when we started ramping things up a little and there was a number of shots that were very much off-centre with both, but the Max dealt with them far better than the HD. I wasn't honestly expecting to see that because up until then it had remained fairly consistent. But I've got to point out that when you were striking centre of the club face, centre of the club face, there was no great difference. But when you were finding the centre, that's when you started to see the benefits of the Max product. Now I started hitting more off centre with the longer shaft, hence the reason I used the shorter shaft. And it also started to occur when I swung a little bit quicker, which is natural with the longer shaft. Now the other thing with swinging a little bit quicker is what I found with these reviews of late is these latest drives that have come out, they're almost better suited or the better player is gonna get more benefit out of them than the, than the average Joe, if you like. Because what I'm seeing is it's almost like these clubs, although they're max by name, they've been designed for where a better player can gain advantages of the forgiveness that was built into clubs that would naturally spin too high in the past, if that makes sense. So it's an odd one because you always associate max products with the sort of masses, but I think you'll see more of these clubs and we already know, I mean, Colin Morikawa has gone for the max version, which sort of reiterates the point. So what you're getting is better players with faster swing speeds than me, are gonna gain more benefit because what they're not gonna see, in the past they'd have been a ballooning effect with a lot of high spin. They're not necessarily seeing that where this combination of, I don't know, they've managed to put all this thing together. I've explained what Taylor made is saying, but I think they've just got a, a very good combination of maintaining a good launch, fast ball speeds from across the club face, and a spin number that isn't ballooning too high. I hope that all made sense. It certainly did to me within the testing. You should have seen some overlays of some shots that perform still incredibly well from off center strikes with the Max and fell off a little with the HD. That's the kind of proof, if you like, I was looking for. But look, it goes without saying, I said it in a previous video. If I'm gaming the HD and that's where I'm at right now in a Stealth 2, I'm happy. This is a really, really good golf club. I've loved it. It's very consistent. And at my 93 mile an hour club head speed out on the course, am I really going to see the gains that are possibly there in the QI 10 Max? I'm not so sure. If I get out there and I start to get a little bit excited and confident and start to step on a few and want to sort of get up to that 96, 97 mile an hour club head speed, and I consider going back to a full length shaft, am I going to see benefits from the QI 10 Max? I think yes is the answer to that question. So as ever, it really depends on what you are looking for from your driver. And either way, there are some incredible options out there right now. The story is always the same. What you do is if you're not looking for a driver and you're happy with what you've got in the bag, then you don't need to throw any shade on any manufacturer that's trying to attempt to change things slightly. You just crack on with the one you've got. If, however, you want a bit of a change up, then what you do is you go and get custom fit because it's essential. You take your old driver, you see how it performs and stacks up against a new driver. If there's no difference, you keep your money in your pocket. But if there's gains that you recognize that might help you enjoy the game a bit more then and you can afford to do it, then go ahead and do it. It's as simple as that really. Anyway, I hope that the information that you got in today's video was some way of a pointer to helping you differentiate between the two. I think I've got my answers anyway. Right, thanks for watching. I'll see you all soon.